Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the Bring on the Begonias webinar. I'm just going to give you fair warning that probably six or seven years ago, I had only a few house plants in my house. I was a big outside gardener, loved perennials, shrubs, annuals, but never was big into the house plants until one of my friends invited me to the Begonia Society meeting here in Greater Atlanta, and I fell in love with begonias. They they are so diverse. Um, the leaves, every color, shape, size. Um, and it's interesting. I was a little bit ahead of my time because with COVID, houseplants have become very, very popular. I mean, everybody was housebound and everybody was discovering, you know, houseplants and something to take care of and something to do during COVID. But they all seem to be more on the aeroids and philodendrons and things like that. And begonias really didn't get a fair shake. Um, I, I just don't think they're as well known, but they're just as diverse and interesting. So but this would be an opportunity to introduce you to begonias and the different types, how to grow them, how to propagate them, and maybe you will fall in love with them too. Now, I'm going to tell you right now that I have over 200. I have a greenhouse, but I have some in my house. Some are in terrariums, some are in the greenhouse, and I'm actually starting a hardy begonia bed in my yard because there are some begonias that grow in cooler climates that um, perhaps may survive our winters here. So I'm also testing that. But let's get started and I will introduce you to the world of begonias. So Begoniaceae is one of the largest flowering plant families, and there's over 2,000 different species and thousands of cultivars. Species are those that grow in the wild. Um, most of these are native to the tropical and subtropical continents like Africa, Asia, Central and South America. Begonias like shade and humidity, so you know, rainforests and jungles. A lot of these species are actually endangered. And one of the goals of the American Begonia Society is not to let any of these go extinct. So they have a, um, a section uh, of people that are interested in, you know, keeping the species going. But mature begonias can range anywhere from a few inches tall to over 12 feet high. Now, I don't have any in my house that are over 12 feet high, but I do have a lot that are in the few inch category. So just to kind of back up here, just to kind of explain the difference between a species and a cultivar. Like I said, the species is grown in nature. It's natural to um, a location, you know, whether it's India or China or wherever. Um, and they're a group, similar grouping. A lot of these individual species are only grown in this area of the world in a very small locale. And these species, they may interbreed and reproduce by seed, and but it's going to be a, just a natural occurrence. And sometimes there's two different species in the same area, and there may be actually a natural hybrid that occurs. Um, some of these have a unique variety form. There may be a dark form and there may be a light green form, something like that. It's just a, a distinctive trait um, that sets them apart. Now, the man-made side or the cultivar, that is man getting involved. He is actually taking flowers and pollinating um, the, the different female flower with, you know, another male flower um, and coming up with a whole new plant. Um, now, each of these hybrids do have seeds that, you know, just naturally occur when they bloom. If you were to plant those seeds, you would not get the exact same plant that you took that from. And that's just because it's a hybrid. And if you remember your biology back in high school, um, you don't have a true um, child. You know, it's a combination of genes and so forth. You might have your mother's blue eyes and you know your dad's brown hair. So it's a hybrid, don't look the same. And then a cultivar, is just one that's, you know, um, that's been named as, you know, a seedling and it's got distinctive characteristics from the parents and something that, you know, you think these plants men would want to sell. So those are, that's what's called a cultivar. <clears throat> so when we talk about species begonias, um, 
you know, a lot of people think, well, species begonias, ah, it's probably just boring green leaves. Actually, the species begonias are very, very interesting, and a lot of people collect them. Um, here's a few species begonias grown in different parts of the world. The first one up there on the going clockwise with the orange flowers, that's called Lunaris. It has very large leaves, beautiful orange flowers. And in the pot with it is begonia rex. And that is when we talk about rex begonia a little bit further on we'll talk about this is the start of the all the rex begonias you see was in its heritage this particular begonia to the right of that is begonia palensis it's kind of has that spider web looking leaf very interesting kind of pustulated leaf and then below that is something that looks like from outer space that is called begonia melanobulata and they call those little pointed tips on it bullets and they each have a hair coming out of them. This one is a, a terrarium begonia, very unique and interesting. A lot of people like to collect that one. To the left of that is begonia raja, just beautiful lustrous leaves with that lime green veining and like the maroon in between the veins. And then to the left of that is begonia hispida. Um, that one I just find very interesting because it has like, they call it the piggyback begonia because each of the leaves has little leaves growing off of it. It's something that looks like it should be in a, a circus zoo where it's just um, a unique characteristic of this particular begonia. So then we also have the hybrids. And of course, there's plenty of hybrids. They're all very beautiful. These could have come from a mixture of two hybrids together or a species with a hybrid or two species mixed together. But these are all hybrids. The first one is Steve's Mo Leaves Mother of Pearl, which I think is a very pretty, that pretty begonia, that pink in the center, which you really can't tell from the picture, it's almost iridescent. Again, silver limbo to the right of that, it is almost an iridescent silver color. Um, below that is begonia midnight sun. This one has just a very unique mixture of leaves. Some are pink, some are green, um, different veining, sometimes the, leaf, the green veins with the pink, just a unique begonia. And then begonia angelo, this one is just unique with the orange leaves with the the black stitching along the outside. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the different types of begonias because each one of these begonias comes, is kind of grouped into a type. Um, and with that many, 2000 plus, you kind of have to like group these together. So what they have done in the taxonomy world is they've created these different groupings. And so there's the cane begonias, the rhizomatous, the rex, and those are the three that we're really gonna kind of concentrate on here today. And then there's the Semper Florens, which you all probably know in your garden, around your mailbox, that's the little wax begonia. Tuberous begonias, I'm sure you've seen those in the nursery. They're the ones that are very floriferous. Their leaves aren't anything to speak about, but they have lots and lots of flowers in all colors of the world. And there's others out there. They have the shrub begonia, the thick stem begonia, the scandon. Scandon just means a trailing begonia. Um, but we don't have time today to go through all of those. So I'm going to concentrate on the first three. In this picture, you'll probably see there's a, um, a, it's actually a cane begonia, but you don't really think about it as being a cane begonia because it's more of a terrarium. It's unusual in that these little green leaves have these red spots, a very unique species begonia. And you can tell a species begonia by the way that the name is written. Um, they're always in lowercase and generally ital italicized. Um, the or the uh, cultivars or the hybrids, they you know usually capitalize just normal print, but that's how you can determine whether it's a species or if it's a hybrid. So let's talk about the cane like group first. Now, probably some of you have seen cane begonias. Um, this is at my house. I have a table of them, all different sizes, shapes, colors. You know, some leaves are dark, some are spotted, some are green. Um, they are very free flowering. Um, they're one of the easiest begonias to grow. They're great for beginners. Um, you know, they can be from six inches tall to 12 feet. Um, but these here are cane begonias and you know sometimes they're affectionately called angel wing begonias that's kind of what people 
group them as, and you've probably grown angel wing begonias probably in your yard too. Um, but you can determine that it's a cane by their stem. They have like bamboo like stems that have like little jointed. And you can see them where um, you probably can't see it as well on this picture, but you can see where the joints are in each of those. And so those are cane begonias and they're, you know, upright generally begonias. So here's a few canes, um, begonia snow capped. Um, again, this one has got a lot of spots on it and little white tip. All the plants, hybridizers, they're always trying to make the leaves more, have more white or bigger spots or have a white tip. Um, they're always, you know, trying to make something different. They don't want to have the same thing. Um, the one in the big picture is Begonia Elsa. And, um, excuse me, this one is a white flowering, has very long leaves in a dark color and like kind of a silver spot. And to the left of that, Holly's Holiday, which has no spots, but beautiful lustrous green leaves and has lots of pink flowers on it. Um, all of these have flowers that, you know, in these large um, racemes. Um, and they're just really pretty begonias. And again, one of the easier ones to grow. And then there's the rhizomatous group. Um, now rhizomes, and I'll show you a picture of one here in the next slide, they are grouped together um, because they grow from, it looks like a stem, but it hugs the ground. And it's not buried, it's on the top of the ground. Now there's a subcategory, they call it the jointed upright rhizomatous, where the rhizome is somewhat under the ground, but I'm not gonna confuse you with that. Um, has lots and lots of beautiful hybrids in all different colors, pattern, leaf shape. Um, this one here is Mr. Hunt, and he's about, I don't know, four or five feet tall. He looks a little bit taller in this pot because it's a large, it's a large pot, but you can just see how big the leaves are, how palmate they are, the little um, serrated edges. A very pretty begonia. And again, these bloom as well. They're not as much known for their blooms. They're all kind of basic begonia blooms, but they do bloom. They generally bloom in the spring. Um, but if you're growing these, you're probably not growing them for the flowers, you're growing them for the foliage. So here's an example of rhizomes. On the left, this is you know rhizomes growing. You can see them if you open pull the leaves back, you'll see it looks like kind of fingers, um, just dark colored laying on the ground. Um, that is from which all these leaves are coming from. That's a rhizome. The one in the center is a very large begonia. You can see that probably is bigger than my two of my thumbs put together. But again, it's a rhizomatous begonia. And then you have here on the next slide or the next picture, uh, that's a rhizomatous begonia, but it's not as, you know, kind of dark and woody looking as the one on the first, but this is again a rhizomatous begonia, it's growing, the rhizome is growing along the, the uh, surface of the soil. And here's some pictures of um, some rhizomatous begonias, Seismoriae, which is a species, a very unusual species, and uh, the hairs come out of that very beautiful foliage. Um, Madam Queen here, very lustrous maroon colored leaves with a chartreuse veining. It can get quite large. The leaves have that um, crested edging with little hairs coming off. Begonia lotus land, this is a smaller picture, but that is a very large leaf. If you see that next to my hand, you get an idea of how large that leaf is. And then to the left of that, Decochex is a, you know, it almost looks like spider web foliage on those leaves. Very pretty. Um, another hybrid, Begonia Red Fred. This one is um, has lustrous maroon colored leaves that can get quite large and has beautiful hot pink flowers in the springtime. And, you know, these leaves, again, there's so many. As you can see, this is why I have 200 because I can't just say I like one. They all have such unique characteristics. Reddington Shores, you know, the double spiraled leaves in like kind of a chartreuse color. Wild Pony kind of grows upright um, with the dark leaves kind of spiraled. 
and then the red road again just those little hairs in a spiral type leaf it's just very unique you can tell i like the begonias and then the third category i want to talk about is begonia rex now just to confuse you all rex begonias are rhizomatous okay so if you were to pull back the leaves on this this is the the original begonia rex you would see these are rhizomatous begonias as well but they have been grouped separately because they've all descended from the Indian species begonia rex. So these colorful rex begonias that we're going to see here in the next couple slides, back in its heritage somewhere, there was the begonia rex. That was crossed with other types of rhizomatous begonias. So when you go to certain nurseries and you see, <laughs> if you went in the houseplant room and it says rex begonia, rex begonia, rex begonia, well, a good chance it could be a rex begonia, but I've seen in, in many cases where they just label everything a rex begonia when in reality, it's probably just a rhizomatous begonia. There's no begonia rex in its heritage, but these companies, you know, they just print off a thousand tags and everything's a rex begonia. So this is begonia rex. This one is, it's a beautiful rex begonia. And one of the slides I showed you earlier that was in the pot with the Lunaris, um, still grown today, but you'll also see what has happened with the hybridizing of the Rex begonia. Um, again, beautiful colors. All of these have some begonia Rex in their heritage. On the left is one that I've actually registered with the American Begonia Society. It was a seedling that I did. We had a, a kind of a class in one of our meetings about seed growing. Um, and there, somebody brought in some seed pods from Begonia Judy Cook. And when I planted these, and this, you know, this was over a period of time from seed, it, it doesn't happen overnight. Um, I had a lot of different looking begonias. Like I said, if it's a hybrid, not all the children of that hybrid are going to look the same. And this one actually was very unique. The leaves got extremely large. Some of these leaves can get 13 inches long. And it had the silver coloring in it with the green veining. I had some that were just plain brown. I had some that, you know, had, you know, that were kind of like a deep green. But this one was the most unique. And this is the one I grew out and, and then named and registered. So that's Begonia Marianas Moth. Some other rexes, begonia tie dye, very pretty. It has the you know the spiral with the pink and the silver leaf. Um, to the right, Georgia Tasker. Again, this one can get to be quite large leaves. With that beautiful chartreuse green with the dark centers, very pretty. Um, begonia RMK2. Um, this was a recent hybrid, at, um, maybe in the past couple of years. Very easy to grow, very pretty. Um, you can see it has some of that hybrid where the little hairs are coming out of the leaf. So somewhere along the line, it was bred with another, you know, hybrid that had that. Um, Jurassic watermelon. This is, you know, one of the Jurassic series that you probably can find in, in the nurseries. Um, and then just to the right of that, it's just, a, it's a hanging basket that's I have in my yard that I've put a couple of Rex begonias and an angel wing begonia in together. So how do you grow begonias? One thing you need to remember with begonias is you don't want to overwater. If you have a tendency to overwater, you need to definitely use a very good potting soil and add some perlite because well-draining soil. They don't want to be dry, but they don't want to be soaking wet. And what I've discovered is for me, what works well is using clay pots because they're, they're breathable, unlike plastic pots. Now, some people have great success with plastic pots. They work great for the cane begonias. But for me, with the rhizomatous begonias, they're much more temperamental and they don't like to be sopping wet. So the, the clay pots have worked well for me. And you don't want to overpot them. You don't want to put a four inch plant that you bought at Pikes or Home Depot into an eight inch pot because they'll swim in that and they actually like like to be a little root bound. So you only want to move them up to like a one inch bigger pot than what they are when those roots fill up the old pot. Now, begonias don't require a lot of fertilizer, but you can fertilize about a quarter strength. So if the box or the instructions call for one teaspoon, 
use a quarter teaspoon of that in, per gallon. Um, and you can use that in the growing season. Um, or you can, if you don't do the liquid fertilizer, you can always use like a slow release fertilizer in the pot, like an Osma coat. And you only need to really do that during the growing season, which is the spring and summer. Now, depending on the begonia, some need higher humidity. A lot of the species uh, that are grown in certain locations, you know, are in very humid environments. And if you don't put it in a humid environment, it will probably die. It'll just kind of shrivel up and get crusty leaves. Um, and so you may require a terrarium. And a lot of people love these species, begonias and growing in them in terrariums. They're almost like, you know, decor. Um, I like to go to a Goodwill or Home Goods or someplace like that. You can find some beautiful jars with lids um, and you can plant in them. Um, but you definitely want to research your begonias. I mean, the American Begonia Society website has lots of information on soil mixes and everybody has a different take on a soil mix. Um, you know, it, it, you can research, does this one require humidity or no, not? It can be just grown in just your normal house atmosphere. But if you really want yours to thrive, you really need to know what the requirements are. So here's some terrariums. Um, they can be planted directly in the container. Um, you can use like a sphagnum moss, or you can just put the pot under glass, like in the second picture. Um, I got one of those cloches, I think it was at Home Goods, and I just, you know, put my potted plants on a plate and put the, the glass over them. Or you can just plant in normal soil. That is just Dollar Tree, you know, plastic salad bowls on top of each other, and you can plant directly in that. Now, these do not have drainage because they're, you know, self-contained. So you've got to be very careful. You don't overwater. You just want it to be lightly damped. Mainly these plants are growing, you know, based on the humidity that's in that atmosphere and not necessarily gathering the moisture from the soil. So now that I've had you enticed by all the different begonias out there, um, there is a way if you can find you know, a friend or somebody that, and, or maybe you just go and you, you've bought a Rex begonia somewhere and you want to propagate it, um, to share with friends. So there's a couple of things you need. You need light, water, a healthy scion, which just means a leaf or a stem, um, some form of humidity, warmth. Um, and to do the propagation, a cutting board, you want to have some rubbing alcohol because you want to disinfect your tools before you propagate, um, a sharp knife or razor blade, um, and some sterile moist medium. I like to use again, like a pro mix with perlite. Some people use straight perlite. Some people propagate in the sphagnum moss. And then rooting hormone. Now that's optional. I've found that, you know, begonias, they don't need, they're, they're pretty good at just growing without any kind of rooting hormone, but some people do like to use the rooting hormone on the leaf or the wedge. So talking first, you know, there's different forms of propagation. Like I mentioned seed, if you want to either propagate a species by seed, or you want to just try your hand at maybe finding a chance seedling from a hybrid um, you can harvest seed. I'm not going to get into seed um, growing in this particular demonstration. Um, there's water propagation. I'm sure many of you have done this. You may take a cutting and you stick the cutting in a base of water and it roots and then you plant it in soil. Um, then there's stem cuttings, which again is a stem, but instead of using water, I actually put it in the soil right away, like in this picture. Uh, a rhizome cutting, and I showed you those rhizomes, you can actually just take a piece of rhizome and lay it on top of the soil and you can create a plant from that. Or a leaf cutting, which can be the entire leaf or it can just be a wedge. And I'm gonna show you a picture of that. So this first picture here on this slide is a cane begonia. And like I mentioned, cane begonias have those little joints and there's generally a bud at each of those joints. And from that bud, when it's under soil, it will actually grow new shoots. And so by 
submerging that in the soil, you'll actually get a fuller plant if you have more of those joints underneath the soil. So let me show you a picture. Here's a cane begonia. This is begonia snow capped on the right. I took it out and you can see the joints along here. So what I do is I cut it right below a joint from there. It's going to root from those joints. I take off these lower leaves and then I'm going to put it in the soil up to and over those individual buds and water it in. Now, what I do on these larger leafed cane begonias, I cut the leaves just because rather than the begonia trying to get water out to the leaf, I'd rather it put its effort into rooting. So I've cut these leaves like in half. Now, I can leave this out in the summertime and the humidity that we have, and it will start to root immediately. I don't use the water propagation. It's just, why make two steps when you only have to do one? Just plant it in the soil and then you don't have to like take it out of the water and plant it in the soil. Um, you could actually put this under a glass um, or you can take a, you know, a plastic bag initially and, you know, put that over it if it's in your house and it's not very, if it's very dry air. But I've had great success just growing them outside. Um, and planting and you will see in a few weeks like if you'll tug at that that step it's not going to move it's going to have started you know so started rooting within the soil so that's a cane begonia now cane begonias cannot be started with leaves so that cane that i just showed you where i took the leaves off it they're throwaways um you can't take a leaf from a cane begonia and root it. Now, it may look like it gets roots, but if you plant it in soil, it's never gonna do anything. It's just gonna be a leaf. It's never gonna grow a stem or anything. But the rhizominous begonias and the rex begonias can be started by a single leaf. And you can do that with either a stem with a leaf on it, which you can see here, or just a wedge of that leaf with the veins on it. So. In the diagram, you're seeing that whole root, I mean, excuse me, that whole stem, and that is the original petiole with the original leaf on it, and the root starts at the base of the petiole, then it sends up leaves from there. Or you can take that leaf and you can cut it, as long as you have, you know, a good sized vein on there, and put that in soil and the plant will grow starting from that vein. So you'll get a plantlet from just the wedge and that's called a wedge cut. So here's a plant that I grew and it was just a wedge. I put it in there and you can see it's starting a plantlet here. You can even see on the back side of that wedge, there's some leaves coming off the back side, and that creates a very full looking plant. A leaf cutting. Now these are leaf cuttings that I just put in um, little jiffy pellets. And you can see it's starting from the base of the leaf where that petiole is, that stem. It's sending up, it sends down its roots first and then it sends up new leaves. And a rhizome cutting, like I said, from one of these rhizomes, it doesn't even have to have a leaf on it. If it's a live rhizome, you can actually cut it, lay it on the soil. Now this one, I took off a mother plant you can see that fresh cut there, that green. Um, it had one leaf on it. I left the leaf on it and you know, give it some opportunity to some chlorophyll. And you can just lay that on there. And from there, you will start to see leaves come out of the rhizome. So if you pull one, you know, some of these rhizomes are just laying on the, you know, ground already started rooting into the soil. You can take one of those put these roots under soil. And again, you will get a plant that grows from there. So when you create these, you plant them, you either use your Jiffy pellets or you, I like to use um, little like Dixie cups, like the plastic Dixie cups, which you can see here with some perlite and, you know, pro mix mixed together. Um, you stick it in a very humid environment. I like to use these little sterlite Sterilite, I think that's how you say it, boxes, and put it under light. They need about 12 hours of light 
and some warmth. You don't want to put it near your air conditioner. You want to put it in a warmer spot in your house. Put some light on it. Keep the little lid on and you will get a lot of different, you know, begonias coming up. These are a bunch of different cultivars and species here. But just a, a very easy way to propagate these, share them with your friends. So if this is interesting to you and you think you like to get into begonias, we would be more than happy to have you at our begonia meeting, which meets every third Saturday of the month. Um, we are actually hosting the American Begonia Society uh, National Convention here in Atlanta between September 26th and October 1st. And you're welcome to go out to the Begonia Society website and get more information. Um, we will be having a plant sale um, open to the public. Now, the first night is open to the people that are at the convention. And then on Saturday, we are going to have an open to the public um, plants, plant sale. If you wanted to come by and get some begonias to start your own um, begonia menagerie like I did, you're more than welcome to. And if you have any questions or want more information, you can reach out to the Atlanta Begonia Society at gmail.com. So I'm going to open this up to questions. If anybody has any, i um, happy to answer them. But I thank you for staying on and hope you enjoyed all this. <laughs>